The terminal degree of composition, the degree to end all degrees. That's of course the doctorate degree. This typically comes in two flavors, the PhD or Doctor of Philosophy and the DMA or Doctor of Musical Arts. Now traditionally the PhD is more research focused while the DMA is more practice focused. Though keep in mind if you're a PhD student you still have to compose music. And if you're a DMA student you still need to conduct research and write papers. It's just that one leans a little bit more than the other. With that being said today I'm going to uncover three pieces that got me accepted to the CUNY Graduate Center for a PhD in music composition and Columbia University for a DMA in composition. So the first piece we're going to hear is Minata for orchestra and electronics. It's a piece that means lighthouse in Arabic and I wrote this for the American Composers Orchestra back in 2015. Now this piece you can see has a title page, it has an inside page with the instrumentation, a percussion key, the technical requirements because this piece does have an element of electronics in it and of course we have our performance notes and the program note at the very bottom. On the very next page is the first page of the music with the title on the top, the composer on the top right, instrumentation names on the left, and of course all those magical dots and lines on the page which we call music notation. So let's hear it. So you might notice that the trumpets have these digital delayed signals on them. There's these microtones that are playing and that's coming from the Max MSP patch that I made for this particular piece. So the pitches get higher and higher. The trumpets can't actually play those pitches in real life. And then we have our first arrival point with this big chord in the electronics and a low chord with the electronics here too. Another high chord, low chord in the electronics. So all this stuff is being produced live with the trumpet being recorded and then processed through my Max MSP patch. And then another arrival point. So it's a really crazy piece. It's meant to be a fanfare. It's meant to open a concert. And by the way, the Louisville Orchestra is going to play this piece in March 2023. So I'm gonna get another chance to actually hear how these electronics work in an acoustic space. Now, even though the instrumentation of the next piece is fairly similar, notice that I do use the instrumentation in a very different way. I do have a very different mood. It's not a fanfare in this next piece. And this next piece is completely acoustic. There are no electronics in it. So Tacht is a piece I wrote for Sinfianetta back in 2016 for the new Juilliard Ensemble. And very similarly to Menara, you'll see the first page, title cover, then the next page you're gonna see the instrumentation, the performance notes, program note, and my website down at the bottom. Just very, very standard stuff you should always do at the beginning of your scores. On the very next page we have the first page of music. Notice that it's a lot less busy than the beginning of Minata. This is going to be a completely different kind of piece. So let's hear it. Now there's no voice in this piece. This is actually the harpist singing into the back of the harp in the very beginning all alone. And the reason I did this is I thought this would be a nice way to have an homage to Umm Kalthum, who's this big time Arabic megastar from Egypt that died back in the middle of the 20th century. I wanted this to be like an homage to her in the way that you have this kind of ghost soprano in the background that starts up the whole piece and then she kind of disappears as all these kind of microtonal melodies start to emerge. And then, spoiler alert, at the very end, she comes back and the harp is singing this G, F sharp thing as we end the entire piece. So all this stuff that's happening in the violins and the flute and the clarinet is just a ornamentation of this G, F sharp from the very beginning of the piece. So it's very like Beethoven in that way of just taking what you see 
uh, in the very beginning and just expounding on that, developing on that initial idea. So introducing a few more notes up and down. So not just G and F sharp, but sometimes this B half flat, sometimes the D below, E flat a little bit above that. So we're starting to spread out the pitch content in, the few, in these first few pages, that is. Introducing more instruments, not just strings and winds. We have some brass coming in like the horn and later on we'll have the trumpet enter as well and the trombone. So it's just kind of like blossoming flower that starts from just this solo harp sing into the back of our harp. Now before we get into the last tune, I'd really appreciate if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the channel. I have a lot of videos coming up that talk about composition tips and conversations with composers that I really admire, so I don't want you to miss any of those. The final work is a piece for solo piano and electronics, which is written in a very minimalistic style. It's a style I don't really work in usually, but I thought it fit the bill for what I wanted to achieve with this particular piece. So just like the other pieces, no surprise, we have a title page with my name, title of the piece, and the instrumentation. Then on the inside cover, we do have the technical requirements because this piece does have electronics. And then we have the note for the pianist, uh, how to practice the piece basically, notes for the electronics technician, and then this notation here which reads E half flat, which is used constantly throughout the piece. So in the first page of music, it's really important to notice that there are a bunch of staffs, not just the piano staff. We have the earphone staff, which actually shows all the different clicks that they're gonna hear. The top X shows the first beat of every single measure, while the bottom X shows all the beats that are not the first beat. So this way, the pianist doesn't get lost. She knows or he knows exactly where they are. Then the next staff is the electronic staff. This is the staff that shows all the stuff that's coming out of the speakers. The next one right below that is the max trigger. In other words, what event are we doing at this moment in time? In measure one, we see tape, click, start. In other words, this is when the electronics start. If you head over to measure six, that's trigger number two. Piano input, reverb, fade in. And then we have three, four, five, six, etc. So these dictate what the electronics are doing throughout the piece. And of course, we have our grand staff, which is the notes that the pianist is actually playing in real time. So that D is actually the pianist, whereas that E half flat is the electronics. So notice that we don't hear any of those X's because that's the sound of the headphones. So I like this piece a lot because it shows what you can do with microtones with a piano. Because of course the piano doesn't play microtones. I put all the microtones in the electronics part. And all the pitches are quite close to each other, so you can't really tell what the live piano is doing and what the electronics are doing. It's all kind of mixed in together, which I like very much. And then here we have a little bit of the piano just playing the regular E flat instead of the electronics doing the E half flat. So there's this kind of like sliding between the E flat and the E half flat that's going on throughout this whole piece. <laughs> 